Hello everyone, welcome back. This is I Say Cosm. Today we're continuing with Stygian, Reign of the Old Ones. Let's get straight into this creature. Yep. The creature whose two faces are inseparably entwined talks as one entity. Its dual mouths opening and closing in perfect harmony. From beyond the garden, the apostle arrives. As it was told, he is simply one. The doubling chorus of its voice has a nauseating effect on you. Eternally separated from his other half. What are you, creature? Tell me! I am the one who is broken, now mended. I am the one who is in conflict, now at peace. I am the one who is divided, now whole. I am the one who is two, but became one. I am Edemava of the Lord God. Risen from the ashes of the old men, the obsolete. Welcome to the garden, Apostle. Its many eyes blink in a disturbing pattern. You've been expected. Why do you call me Apostle? The heavenly voice foretold your advent to me. You are the Apostle, who is doomed to crumble, yet who will serve the purpose of the Lord God one last time. To redeem the sins of the old men and draw the curtain of this stage. How did you end up like this? What's going on in the street? Once I wasn't whole like this, in the shadows of purgatory. I was separated, living as two, as husband and wife, and a couple with the fear of the Lord God in their hearts. And they were clueless, scared, lost, questioning, crying over why the Lord God had condemned them to this realm of eternal twilight. They read the holy book over and over and prayed through the endless, lightless days. Yo, oh, God has no power here, creature. The creature moves an array of its numerous limbs in a hysterical manner. Repenting their sins, repenting all the sins of the mankind, they screamed how men had failed the Lord God. Cried and repented and prayed and repented. Your mind is twisted just like your body. Until the heavenly light appeared in the sky, all of its strangely coloured, membranous eyes look at the point above with awe. Oh, how beautiful it was. The colours, all the colours of Eden, never saw their likes on earth. Right away, the godly light pushed, punished the ones who had no hope for salvation, scourged them to ashes and bones. With both of its mouths, the creature hisses in disdain. Lonely, barren, self-seeking ones they were. Then the light embraced the others, embraced us. Ah, we felt all the love of creation deep inside. It gave us the chance to be blessed as a whole, become the new favoured of the Lord God to populate this Garden of Eden. But the others, as Adam and Eve did in the past, they all failed him, forsaking his path. They turned into blasphemers. Thirsting for the bliss of the light sleeping under the earth, only I remained faithful. Adam and Eve had already been damned when they ate the forbidden fruit. Their separation was their end, but I am whole. Man and woman merged into one. Edemava, the serpent, can neither separate nor deceive me now. So tell me what God has in mind for me. You're a false god. The hermaphroditic creature responds with blissful arachnid emotions, filling you with revulsion. The apostle sees the truth now. You understand the deed which must be done to protect the new children of God. You will indeed find my firstborn son. Oh, blessed by the holy light, blessed be the colors divine. I know I'm going to regret this, but tell me more. Deep signs of worry infect both of its faces. My firstborn son, Kabul committed what was forbidden. He took the life of his brother Abel and abandoned me, his womb father, to join the forsaken ones. O oh, apostle of the fallen, my son has sinned and I know that he will sin again, unless you bring him to me. Only you can dissuade him from the thorny path of the profane. I know there is salvation for him. For the love of the Lord God, I call you to your final duty as the apostle of the old men. Both voices of the hermaphrodites tremble with a deep maternal longing now. 
Bring me Kabul, my fur. Bring me my firstborn back into my arms. I am the chosen one, and I'll succeed in my quest, creature. You shall find him inside the garden, running alongside the Forsaken. Tell Kabul that his womb father forgives him. Creature's many eyes shine with hope. Tell him that there is a place for him in the heavens. How was Kabul born, I wonder? Do I even want to know? The creature moves its amorphous body with erratic gestures that you interpret as signs of pleasure. Apostle, sometimes when I close my eyes, I see the Eden beyond and I feel sensations like I have never felt. Do not mistake them for the selfish, possessive, corrupt love that is felt for another. That love is poison, which eventually leads to lust, ruin and damnation. Both faces of the creature grimace with disgust. But in those times when the heavenly symphony fondles my soul, my new, beautiful body starts to delight itself gently. And I become one with the Lord God, since loving oneself is loving creature in its pure creation in its purest form. In such a moment, I was blessed with the twin seeds of my children, Kabul and Abel. At that moment of divine joy, I knew that my progeny was destined to walk the earth as the new children of God. Who are these forsaken? Others whom the Lord God gifted with the chance of redemption were the ones who turned it down. They all ate the forbidden fruit, and like carrion beasts, they craved mindlessly for the light of the sleeper beneath. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, outsider. The outsider talks while gazing down at the hermaphrodite creature. Now I see that the tender love of family may be exhibited even in damned souls such as this. And I unavoidably ask the gods, what was I lacking? You may not have a family, but at least you are not alone. His eyes turn brighter. Your words, they hold great value. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and we're going to rest because I took some... I took a beating, looks like. Cool. Looks like we're... Pretty much back up there, hey. Right. Off we go. Let's go find this sun. Can't catch me, fool. Hey, camping supplies. That's always a good, good thing. Okay, let's see what we have here. I think we can take these guys. Oh no! <sighs> oh, that's some good stuff. Oh, Eduardo's gone. Should've taken better care of him, I guess. Oh, here we go. This must be the sun.
You should somehow find a way to convince the wayward son Edda, of Edda Mava. Hey, there we go. Finally! We took a beating! Touch? Oh. The queer dust covers everything. Everything grey, colours fading. What was I doing? Yes, food. I must eat if I can. But so tired, can't. My eyes. What is this peculiar membrane? They're so, so cadaverous. Lonely ones are dying, but I am here, darling. Our love will keep us alive together. Have I been here before? Familiar, yet different. Everything is so alien. The dust lingers, decay. The plants grow so strange, grotesque. What shrouds my sight? A curtain of death? Am I withering? Crumbling, decomposing. The phosphorescent haze pervades. The mirror, can it be true? No, I must not look upon it. One by one they fall. Not us, not yet. Let us cuddle. Our only change. Is this the same? No. The light, where did it go? Am I dead? No. Can't be. I still feel pain. Such calamity. Is this the end of all? Thou sl... The silt. It's too thick. Can't breathe. The meteor. Unbelievable. The iridescence. But where from? Oh, the light. Damn this darkness, the skies have never been so black. Arkham, where are we? That sound, a burning meteor, beyond the dust that suffocates. Radiance, blinding, riveting, must not get too near. A miasmal fog, permeates, getting so tired, must sleep, can't fight. Screams, I dare not look, I must protect her, God spare me from this darkness. The twilight has lifted, how? This glare, it's near, the colours. This dust, it burns my eyes, my lungs. This lambent rock, it's alive. I wonder if I'm supposed to be collecting those. Should we already check this? Yes. Okay. Successfully saved that thing, I think. I don't know. Uh, let's go back. We need to rest. Otherwise, we're going to die. The creature chirps ecstatically with its multiple mouths. Not once did I doubt the prophecy, not even in the darkest of days. You now have brought me my son. You fulfilled what was spoken into my heart. Uh, of course I did. I am the apostle. The creature that calls itself Edomava searches the ghost of a house it calls home and returns with a strangely glowing meteorite in the shape of a cross. I found this on the day I heard the prophecy. 
The metals in the garden are sometimes blessed by the touch of the Lord and glow radiantly, reflecting the light of the Almighty for eternity. And Amava hands the anomaly the anomalous cross to you. What is it now? Have you realized that the other half of your son looks uh dead? And Amava glances worriedly at the blackening, lifeless half of its offspring. Abel, my son. The membranous layers on the eyes of the creature are blurry now. It continues in a desperate chorus from its twin mouths. I, I am not a blasphemer. God forbid. But, but I can't help but wonder why did the Lord will the recurrence of Cain's sin? That I will never know. Enjoy your last moments with your son. Doesn't seem like he'll be staying for long. The creature drops its head in bitter acceptance, its house of dust. Alright, here we go. What's in here? More of the same. Oh? The color out of space, is that you? That's a lot of them. The oh, it is the color out of space. The malignant energies of the entity that you are now facing are coming from beneath the ashen floor of the street. You need to equip the proper equipment in your main hand if you wish to uncover the terror lying beneath. A shovel, by the looks of it. Okay, okay. I think I've got a bit more of a game plan this time. And we... Damnation to stone! Did it? No joke, that took me like nearly two hours to finish. Oh, what is this? A 
angst. Let's just go with that. Oh my god. Why are you taking damage? Let's just move on. Ugh. Where are you going? Okay. Guess we're going in here. After enduring all the unnameable terrors of the street, you feel like this dreaded house may signify a point of no return in your journey. Would you like to return to Pilgrim's Parish or enter the witch house? Didn't I do that? I didn't need to dig it out though. Alright, let's just go on. Which is house it is. Enter! What's going on in here, I wonder? This extravagant but otherwise smutty hunk of metal is a heater that flaunts the intricacies of the 18th century craftsmanship. This elaborate table clock must have ticked away punctually in times past, but in this house of foreboding stillness, even time itself comes to a halt. As you skim through their fusty and faded pages, you realize that all of these books, save a curious one, on quantum physics and abstract formulations, are work of past centuries. Are we in the house of Kezia Mason? That a certain tenant of this time-stricken abode chose only ravens to showcase in a curious thing, such that one may be inclined to take it as a deliberate metaphor of secrets that shall not be spoken nor forgotten. Interesting. Uh, let us see. I don't know what Gaze of the Abyss was meant to be. Nope. The violescent coruscation of these interlaced geometry, uh, geometrics impose upon your mind a myriad of mathematical possibilities provoking a deep sense of universal mystery. I do believe we are in Kezia Mason's house. Or at least Walter Gilman's. Things are different now. Oh. Circle. Triangle. The showcase has now turned into a pretty display of porcelain dolls, but a close observation identifies them to be sulking little women figures. How can anyone ever smile in a place like this? Oh, wait, I didn't even notice the paintings! The pastoral harmony of the depictions are bleeding away now, not unlike your thoughts. In certain distracted moments, 
Ew. We are mirrored. The hell was that? You may pull your eyes away from the seething nightmarish blackness and try to ignore it, but your terrorized mind has offered no luxury. I don't remember what we're supposed to do. Hello? To what extent has my obsession with non-Euclidean calculus, quantum physics, and my perusal of forbidden terms like the Necronomicon contributed to my fascination with that which lies for hidden betwixt the crumbling, eerily slanted walls of this place remains dubious at best. But regarding my heightened grasp of fourth dimensional problems, a correlation is possible. Perhaps the impressions left upon me by the unconventionally alien ge geometrics of the objects wherewith my dreamscapes are filled are responsible. Amongst all the distractions, I've sought to alleviate the misgivings in which my mind is steeped. Not even a recently developed knack for solving Riemannian equations can give me any comfort. Now sleep beckons me into its dimensional abyss, from whose reaches well up the sardonic laughter of the old crone ever closer. Okay. And there's the other one. These, that these jars could, could preserve human organs is a terrifying thought. What's worse, however, is a whispering insinuating that they're too small to have come from adults. Ooh. Uh oh. And of Nurgle. He gets. Upside down. And there's a rat. It's Brown Jenkins. Oh, uh, circle, triangle, triangle. I thought I got that one before. Oh. Whoa! Hello! Oh, is it going to drive me nuts? My god, did my dreams reach an unprecedented pinnacle last night? Through the intensifying violet phosphorescence, which bled out of the crooked partitions, the repulsive aspect of Kezai Mason crystallized into sight from an infinitesimal point below the loft, whose singularly skewed angles should lead nowhere but to the 666 layers of hell. 
Brown Jenkin creeped ahead, the fairy abomination which must certainly be the witch's familiar. This maleficence yanked me out from out my bed and hurled me into a fantastic world beyond description, which I dare not further discuss here. My pious neighbour urges me to take a crucifix into my possession, but it is useless, since as long as the tittering of that abom abominable rodent man, Jenkin, echoes ever louder in my nightmares, so will that faint voice of mockery that conspires against my consciousness. We've played Dreams of the Witch House on this channel before. We know how that went. Alright. Like, uh, as though it simply can't be activated like the others. Okay. Oh! Remember me! If the luridness of this inhumanly contrived weapon can in any way be taken as a forewarning of the deeds to which it may be committed, the wielder must better have a strong stomach. Okay. I have a sweet new knife. Look at these strangely geometric cubic terraces seem to be built in a way that would support the obvious intention that shaped every element of this ancient ritual site. Focusing the attention towards the center. Well, I can't do anything at the center though. Alright, moving on. Ooh. Where there were objects of chimerical nature, there is only a potentous nothingness now. Whose intangible and cold realism is more absolute than anything else in this place. The black lips start to move, and a voice that grinds away all your hopes resonates inside the room. As if the entity before you is the antithesis of Prospect itself. Do you know what happens when I talk? I feel a strong urge to urinate when you talk, that's one thing. Doom arrives. The black lips smile, revealing the ghastly teeth behind them. Are you looking for something? I've been looking for many things. On the short term, on the long term, in between many things, why? Who knows? Perhaps I am lonely. Perhaps I don't want to watch you rot in this parlor for the rest of your days as I watch the others. I'm looking for a mark. Some kind of star-shaped cliff. Ah, yes. But the mark forgot you. Do you wish it to remember? Do you mean it forgot me? It could mean a couple of different things. Perhaps they recognized you once, but you've been forgotten. Or perhaps you were simply too insignificant to be remembered. Ah, yes. But the mark forgot you. Do you wish it to remember? Uh, yes, if that's possible. The lips halt for a very short moment, during which you think you catch a glimpse of satisfaction in their acrimonious composition. When the lips speak again, the antique furniture inside the room tingles as if to endorse a surreal being. Are you willing to pay the toll? What toll? The lips freeze for a moment, creating an uncanny silence that suggests some kind of vaguely grievous heart. The game should not be played like this. Are you willing to pay the toll? I'm not going to pay a toll, I have no clue about it. The lips speak in an imperious tone that sends a chill down your spine. Nyala Thotep? 
You suddenly feel a ravening hunger. Are you... Oh, fine. I am! The lips move as if they're tasting something of irresistible savour. The toll shall be paid twice. Once now, once later. Light now. The tongue appears to embrace the lips once again. Heavier in the future. Are you willing to pay the toll? I am! The lips continue their dismal query. Do you know the mark you are looking for? Wasn't a kind of star with an eye on it? With a malicious satisfaction, the lips ask once more. Can you draw the mark? I can. In what colour will the mark be drawn? Crimson. The lips continue immediately with another question. What is the most precious of all crimson? Blood. Whose blood is the most precious? Mine. What is the crimson toll? This was not a question at all, but a declaration of what it is about to follow. And you realise, in bitterness, your answers to the lips stygian questions have already collapsed many paths into just one. And the lips ask again, what is the crimson toll? Whoops. <laughs> the words fall from your mouth as if you were just an actor reading a line from the most Acheronian of plays. The toll is my blood. Draw the mark. The black lips are feasting on your desperation now. And do not forget that the time to pay the toll will come again. Cut your hand and draw the symbol on the wall. You draw the accursed ritual knife you found at the center of the strange stones and raise it in the air. Very nice. And away we go! Surprisingly, I didn't take any damage on that. Could we talk for a second? You have something to say, huh? Where have you been? How did we come here? Uh, first, I was on the first floor. You can spare me the details, stranger. I can almost feel the curiosity of the malignant entity that hosts this place. I don't remember a thing. The last thing I remember is entering this cursed place. The rest is shrouded in the mist of forgetfulness. This house is meddling with our minds, stranger. I recommend leaving as soon as practicable. Practicable. To pay a price to come here. The outsider is good, as good a listener as a corpse. He speaks slowly. I told you that you must make another sacrifice. It did. Let us leave this forsaken place. Cool. I should have searched the room though. Whoa. I wasn't expecting this kind of... Oh, Elder Things. Hooray. Is this but one of many universes? In the jaws of madness! Okay. As you open your eyes, you see the face of a middle-aged man in a doctor coat leaning on you. You are experiencing a disorientation of the worst kind and still feel deeply sick to your stomach. The fact that the man is talking right into your face is not contributing to the situation. Mr. Cosm, I need you to calm down now. Do you hear me? I need you to calm down. I'm not sure you don't want to wear the straight jacket again. Sounds as though he's looking forward to it. Gia-wai. Uh, However hard you try, you cannot turn the sounds coming out of your mouth into cohesive words. The doctor continues with a pitying look on his face. Mr. Cosm, 
We've been experiencing what we call a malignant catatonic seizure, which is directly linked to your condition of advanced mental illness. While the doctor speaks, oh god, his face! His voice starts to sound more and more distant while his face begins to morph into a floating object that feel dismally familiar. His face. What is happening to the doctor's face? You're him. You're him, right? It, it, this is all a game. The orderlies quickly move to subjugate you. From their excessive force, you get the feeling that the patients are not treated kindly in this place. You see what I mean? I'm afraid these delusions of yours have become more and more disconcerting lately. Mr. Cosm, but rest assured, they will be solved very soon. Once and for all. The doctor turns to a hulking orderly who looks terrifyingly familiar to you. Jack, monitor the patient for any kind of violent behaviour and respond uncompromisingly. Hey, I'm here, you know. Jack, I know a Jack. Carrying Jack? With an inconsiderate look in his eyes, the doctor turns to you one last time, then walks away. Well, this has taken a turn. What has happened to my little UI board here? This guy's not wearing pants. Interesting. Okay. Uh, the Dreaming Baroness? Despite the occasional ruckus that erupts in the war, this hoary and sunken woman sleeps her time away in unintermittedly in this bedlam, as if her mind has rejected this world altogether. Was it all made up in our heads? Oh my god, what's happening to our friends? Wah! I guess we're gonna find out what's happened in the next one. What a strange turn. Anyway, this has been I Say Cosm. Stay tuned for more Cosmic Horror video games. Thanks for watching.